Hello, Key Biscayne. I'm Dr. Bob Maggs, and I'm here today on behalf of the Key Biscayne History and Heritage Society. A little over a year ago, here on the Key, we formed an organization called the History Society. It has quite a number of members today, and it has come a considerable distance. One of the reasons for forming this History Society was so that we would have an opportunity to remember and to record many of the things that occurred in past years, not only in terms of the land and the property, but in terms of the people. Because it's the land, the property, and particularly the people who have made Key Biscayne the wonderful place that it is today, and the place that you and I and all of us here have come to really enjoy. It's the reason why we're here. We're here because other people helped to bring this about. Today is a special day because I have brought along with me a guest. He's a Key Biscayne resident. He's been here for, my goodness, over half a century. And he has many memories that I'm sure many of you will want to hear about. His name is Bill Noonan. He's known as Ace Noonan to many of us. I think that's a very appropriate name. But I'll let him tell you all about why he's Ace and when he came here and the things that he remembers as he walked up and down Crandon Boulevard 50 and 60 years ago. Bill Noonan, Ace, hey. welcome to Keep you, Skate. <laughs> good to see you, Robert. Well, I came here to go to the University of Miami primarily. Oh. And I came down before uh, I, be, uh, I started there to look at it and see if I'd like it, and I did like it. And so I uh, started as a freshman at the University of Miami in 1950. I graduated in 54. During that time, I took a part-time job at Crandon Park as a lifeguard. And there were several, there was about 20 uh, students at the University of Miami that had that job. And through that beach, I got acquainted with Key Biscayne. I, uh, I used to come into the uh, shopping center that they only had the shopping center there then that was, was uh, a place to get something to eat, go to Vernon's Drugstore, Don Jaycock's Dress Shop, and all of those stores that were right along that, that original shopping center were all friends of mine. So after I graduated, I, I uh, came stayed back here. right here. I stayed here. You came back. Right. Well, that, that's wonderful. So this was in the mid-50s that you finally Yeah, I got out in 54, here. and that was the mid-50s. And right. you're still here now today. And I'm still here. Well, mm -hmm. that's certainly wonderful. Listen, I, I see here you brought a picture of yesterday well, you know, when you were a lifeguard. Could you hold you know, that up? And uh, When we were thinking about this but, this little thing, I, I uh, wonder... Uh, I, I see. Which one are you in there now? Well, I'm in the middle, of course. You're in and, the middle, uh, and your two friends uh, are... I, the guy to the left, a uh, dear friend, Dick Kelsey. That's he, this one he, over here? Over here, yeah. Dick Kelsey. <laughs> and... There's something uh, comical about this this particular picture because Dick is standing on a box. <laughs> he wasn't as tall as as uh, Wally Kaitlin, who was uh, my other friend, and uh, we were all three from New Jersey. He was an All-American at uh, at uh, in wrestling at Lehigh, and he was an All-American at Ohio State in wrestling. They went to high school together in New Jersey. But anyway, that's... Uh, but the middle one is you. The, oh, and and that's you right there. Me. Yeah, that's me right there. Well, <laughs> yes, you do look a bit alike. Right, yeah. All right. Very good. But well, Co said not to show too much of that. And, and who is Co? <laughs> Co is my dear wife. I see. Whom I found on Key Biscayne also. You did? Yeah. Oh, you were a lucky man. And that's, uh, that's I certainly funny. am still lucky. Well, Ace, why don't we do this for a moment? Let's sort of... Picture Key Biscayne as it is today, but then turn that clock back. Mm -hmm. And uh, why don't you walk down Crandon Boulevard with me in 1955? Was it paved? Oh yes, it was paved. Yeah, they and they had a single a single road. You know, they didn't have it the uh, dual road that they have now, but it was single. Oh. You know, two-way traffic. 
Well, where were uh, these coconut plantations? And the coconut plantations were from Cranden Beach. The whole island was a coconut plantation originally. And it was owned by um, the original Mr. Matheson. And, and Mr. Matheson had four sons, I think, and, and portions of the island were divided between those sons. Uh, Hugh had the uh, Jamaica Inn and, and the English Pub, which was a famous restaurant here for many years. Okay. And, and uh, Finley, whom I worked for, had the Key Colony Golf Course. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other two brothers didn't spend that much time here, but they had, they had yeah. operations in other parts mm -hmm. of Florida. Well, today we have blockbusters up there. Mm -hmm. What was in that well, shopping center? That was a shopping center way back yeah. 60 years ago, wasn't it? Exactly. All right. And, and, so uh, and uh, what do that, we have? that was formerly uh, Vernon's drugstore. Like Dick. Mayor Vernon. Like no, no, that. no. His father. His father. And his grandfather. And his, his grandfather, his... Harry, he's the one that started that drugstore. Formerly, he had a smaller drugstore uh, on, the, on the other end of the, of the shopping center. Oh. And when things picked up, he moved up to this. this to the Blockbuster yeah, building. Exactly. Site. And uh, what of else course, was, what else was in that sense? Dick Vernon, you know, he became a pharmacist, graduate of the University of Florida, and and he ran that place for mm -hmm. many many years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that used to be a gathering place. If you wanted to know anything that was going on in this on this island, you go out there early in the morning, and there were, there were different sections that you sat in, you know, and you learned all the news of what's going on on the island. I understand. The pharmacy served breakfast. That's what I mean. They had a, he had a, a bar, you know, where stools, just like an old-fashioned diner would be up north. And uh, <laughs> I tell you, we'd, we'd go in there, we'd all get our same seats each day. We'd have the same, same section of, of, of the... Of it's the, hard to picture a pharmacy as a restaurant or a, a luncheonette uh, yeah. or whatever, but and, I guess that's the way and, it was in those and, days. And Dick had, a, had a, a, a family that ran that thing, and they did a very good job of doing it. All right. Now, and take me it. up along the shopping center. And then what you, else was then there? Then you had uh, Thompson's, uh, uh, he sold all kinds of radios and televisions and and even electric organs and Tommy Thompson was one of the early, you know, developers of this island. Yeah. All right. And uh, then we had uh, Don Jaycox. Now, Don Jaycox was a, a guy that had a dress shop. He was from New Jersey. He had a dress shop there. Yeah, and his wife, dear wife, they ran that dress shop. And, and, then the, and the... Uh, five and ten? And the five and ten. You know, I never did know uh, the owner of the five and ten, but uh, they had a five and ten here. It was a small one, but it was similar to the the things that he sold were similar to the Woolworth and. Uh, I, I I wonder if all of our our listeners here know what a five and ten is, Ace. Well, well it's a five and if ten. you're from where I come from, uh, you'll know what a five and ten. Kresge's was a famous uh, store, and that was more or less a five and ten. And Woolworths was known as a Woolworths. That's where the name came from, Woolworths well, 5 and 10. Well, and well, you could buy anything in there, anything, and the prices were right. And some of them had uh, food counters where you could have lunch. Mm -hmm. Five cents and ten cents for almost everything? Oh, no, no, no. But that was just, a, uh, you know. That was to bring that was you the lead. That was, that was the That was the, uh, All right. Yeah. Now, you had a barber shop, I hear. And <laughs> Devon Schaefer was the barber at that time. What was time. his name? D. Von Schaefer. And he was a barber. And he was a barber. And he was a good old guy. And uh, the story has it that when uh, Mr. Nixon was here on the island. You mean President Nixon? No, he was, uh, he was a senator then. Oh, he was then. a senator then. And he used to walk around, you know, and he was seen in all the different uh, areas of the shopping center. And he walked into D. Von Schaefer's shop one day. And he looked in, he said, eh, and there's a couple, a few guys sitting there, you know, waiting for him. He said, um, could I get a haircut here, sir? And he turned around, he was still busy, you know, he says, get over there and get in line. <laughs> you know. <laughs> to the senator, and, Mr. I mean, president. And I bet Dee oh. remembered that when, the, when he finally became president, you know. Oh, wow. I ordered him around. All right. Well, as we, it, as we walked down the block a little bit more, there must have been a place to eat. A good steak anywhere? Well, no, that was that was not in that shopping center. That was way up the other end of of uh, of the uh, 
entrance into into what was the business part of Key Biscayne, uh, right, right where uh, uh, Stefano's is now. Oh, where Stefano's is by Harbor and Crandon yeah, today? Exactly, yeah. And what and was And this that? was called the Hurricane Harbor Steakhouse, and uh, wow. it was probably one of the most famous in the, in the city of Miami at the time, in all of this area, because they came from all over the greater part of Miami uh, to... Uh, to take part in it, they had a um, they had a very limited menu. They had uh, a, a New York strip of, of filet mignon. They had a uh, pompano on Friday night and a half a chicken on Friday night. They had a creamy Roquefort uh, dressing and a French Roquefort dressing. They had a rosin baked potato, which they were famous for. It could be a regular baked potato or it could be a big yam. All this right here on Key Biscayne. All this right here. It must have been very expensive. You've never had a baked potato, Bob, unless you had a rosin baked potato. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> because they were fantastic. It must have been very expensive. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you how expensive it was. You could get the uh, the sirloin. The, 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 the New York strip was really expensive. That cost right. you three fifty. Three dollars and fifty cents, <laughs> and the really? and, yeah, and and the uh, the tenderloin, you know, which was a nice fillet. It wasn't a large one, but it was uh, done over an open grill, you know, wonderfully cooked, and that was two fifty. Two dollars and fifty cents, right. and I get Later, a potato with it too. <laughs> and you get this rosin baked potato. Oh my the rosin gosh. baked potato was it was probably the it was it was the drawing card of the, uh, more so than the meats. Really, it was really a famous potato. I understand you you worked there for a little while. Well, I did. You did? Yeah. When I graduated from the University of Miami, I graduated as a school teacher, with no exper oh, well, no experience in teaching. But yet. they were well paid in those days. Yeah, I guess, well right? paid. I was supposed to get seven thousand dollars a year as a as, as a, a teacher. As a teacher, yeah. That was big money. But I used to get at this place all the time because I could I could afford it, <laughs> you know. And one night I went in there, and uh, a man who was sitting at the bar, it was a beautiful place, beautifully lighted, and, and it really was a nice-looking restaurant. And this man stopped me, and he says, you're Ace Noonan, aren't you? I said, yes. He said, well, I see you in here quite often, and you seem to know everyone that's, that, you know, that comes in here. Well, I said, I know a lot of them, you know, particularly the people from Key Biscayne. But the... He, I said, well, who are you, and what are you doing? Are you writing a book, or what? what is this? No, he says, I own this restaurant, and my name is Alex Manson. Alex Manson. He owned the he steakhouse. Owned, he owned the Hurricane Harbor, Harbor Steakhouse. Hurricane Harbor and Steakhouse. And when you talk to the old-timers, even over in town, they all remember the Hurricane Harbor Steakhouse. It was really a wonderful place to eat. Well, and, and anyway, he said, well, why are you asking me? He says, because I'd like you to come and work for me. I said, I don't know anything about uh, the restaurant business, you know. He says, I know that. He says, and I can see to it that you, you know, <laughs> you'll learn. And so when he told me how much he was going to pay me, I said, I'll learn real quick, you know, in comparison <laughs> to what I was going to get uh, as a school teacher. But anyway, I worked there for a few years, and, but and you had to buy a tuxedo or a form. Yeah. I understand it was a I, very. He sent know, me to formal. his tailor, you know, and I had the best business suits and the best tuxedos. My wardrobe in those days consisted of tuxedos and walking shorts. When I played golf during the day, and I work at night. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Oh my gosh! Well, let's come down the other. Now we've gone up that side of the street a bit. Let's come down the other side. And I understand we had a golf course right yeah. here in the middle of our yeah. key. Well, you know, that golf course was built by Finley Matheson. It was a nine-hole golf course, and it was designed by a very good friend of mine, Mark Mahana. And uh, it, uh, it was uh, not a private golf course, but uh, it was limited to the people that could play there, you know. And uh, so... My good friend was a pro, Howard Hall, and uh, he ran it for a year or so, and uh, I played there every day, and, and uh, you know, I helped him out whenever I could. And mm -hmm. uh, But t finally one day he said, Ace, he says, I'm giving it up. He says, he says, and you're a good enough golfer and a good enough teacher that uh, why don't you take my place? So I thought it over, and I, I was just happy to, to uh, 
Well, where is that located in You know where the Key today? Colony condominium is now? All those big buildings, yeah. Key Colony? Yeah. That's, that was a golf course. That was a golf, 55 acres, nine-hole golf course. Mm -hmm. And it's gone. And it's gone. Always. Yeah, but uh, fortunately, they were building another one down the end of the right where, and I left there uh, and opened the new golf course in 1970, and that's the links of Key Biscayne. Mm -hmm. And I was there for several years, and uh, I had the opportunity to go to another course over in town, and I took that opportunity. Oh, yeah. wow. Mm -hmm. Well, you must have some great memories about the course here on Key Biscayne, though. Uh, you know, and, and as I said, uh, we're going to talk about the, President Nixon in a minute or two. You can tell me about it. Well, Did you know, he ever play there? Well, he, you know, before we go to to the links of Key Biscayne, he played an awful lot at uh, Key Colony. That was now that your was little pro thing. shop was back on the side, like where the Senest is. Right? Yeah, right, right next to the sandbar. And the know? sandbar. Yeah, right that was next your pro to it. That was my pro shop. And the yeah. sandbar was there. That's right. And the then Senesta Senesta was there. Right. And then the and then the Kibis, then the Royal Biscayne Hotel. Royal Biscayne was there, and then beyond that was the you know the members uh, uh, of Key Biscayne, their, their their beach club. Well, the Royal Biscayne is gone also, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Yeah. I understand that blew away with Andrew. They yeah. it just leveled it. And I remember the guy that built that. It was a guy by the name of Jones. That was a Sheraton. Yes. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and that was that was a, a nice hotel also. Mm -hmm. In that day, so we had the Key Biscayne Hotel and the uh, Royal Biscayne Hotel. And then they had, uh, before the Sinesta, they just had the sandbar. And I can remember when I was managing the uh, Hurricane Harvest Steakhouse, I tried to put a bar into the sandbar, you know. Right. And the owner said, oh, no, we don't want any liquor bars around us. But shortly afterwards, he did. He did. <laughs> he did. All right, if we go down the block a little bit more, we come to uh, the, is it the Ocean Club down there? where? Yeah. The Key Biscayne Hotel was? Well, the Key Biscayne Hotel was a very, very, that was fancy. very... fancy. Not fancy, but it was famous. Very famous. But it was simple in, in design. It was just a block, and it had 100 rooms. It had a great dining room. It had a couple of bars. It had a wonderful uh, swimming area. It had an 18-hole uh, par-3 pitch-and-putt uh, golf course that was... That was uh, you know, it was it was just manicured like a, a real golf course, and and I happened to be the pro there for a while when uh, Tom Parker left. I was I was running the Key Colony and and the little uh, golf course at the hotel, and uh, that that little par three had some of the most famous people in the world that played there. I tell you, I, I mean, remember meeting Nixon there. Yeah, when he was president yeah. on one occasion, but after he. He retired. Uh, he was here on many occasions, but he would have lunch yeah. there or dinner oh, yeah. there. And uh, and he, uh, you know, I can remember one time we were playing. I was playing with uh, three other guys in the seventh hole at the Key Colony. It was about 270 yards. And BB and Nixon and two other fellows were playing. Uh, they were on the green. Well, I hit a tremendous shot. <laughs> Nixon was over a putt like this, and he saw my ball come up like this. And went right across the green. <laughs> he turned around and he looked, you know. And one of the guys that I was playing with pushed me out of the way, and he was posing there as though he had hit the shot. <laughs> and they waited until he came up. He says, don't worry about it, boy. It was a great shot. I understand David Eisenhower was here with him yeah. also. Yeah, David came in. And yeah. we, uh, now, who, who's this BB? BB Rebozo. Oh. A very who's good he? friend of, of uh, President Nixon's. And George Smathers, they knew each other, and that's how Mr. Nixon got acquainted with... Who's George Smathers? He was a senator at the same time that uh, uh, President Nixon was a senator. And they were all wandering around the key. Exactly, and uh, that's how uh, uh, Smathers and Bibi Rebozo knew each other, and they uh, Smathers introduced... Uh, B.B. to... Uh, oh, B.B. Rebozo is the man who had the Key Biscayne Bank over exactly where right. the community center is exactly. today. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, and uh, he started that bank, and, uh, 
and uh, who, oh, Tom Tomasi, he was he was one that was involved there. And but anyway, it uh, this was a nice community in those days. I mean, it really was not big or anything, but. The one thing that I enjoyed about Key Biscayne was the fact that you knew almost everybody on the island. You know? I heard it was because yeah. of uh, B.B. Rebozo and his partner there that we acquired the village green. Well, that, yeah, that was they his sold land. It. That was his land. That was his land. Yeah. And, and what he used to do on that, uh, in that area, he used to uh, uh, raise coconuts. He'd have them in these five gallon drums. You know, it'd be acres of these. On our village green? Oh, yeah, before it was a village green. All it right. was just a, a, yeah, they raised coconuts there, and, and uh, it was right behind his bank. Everything was there. It was Bibi a, was a good friend of mine. He there was really was. a story was. that, uh, uh, that Bibi Rebozo uh, and Nixon and uh, all that group at times would talk about having a state park here someday, and really it was maybe because of Nixon that we were able to have the federal government buy that state park. I really don't know the details of that. I really don't know uh, any of the, uh, the uh, I just, I just know that that state park has developed into quite a, uh, it's, it's quite, quite a, a thing. thing. Yeah. It really is. Okay. So that's the, the, the golf course over there. And, uh, well, the and golf course, you know, I, I, uh, I remember playing there with, uh, President Nixon, Bieber Rebozo, David Eisenhower, and myself. We were in a foursome. And uh, and when you play with the President of the United States, there's about 15 electric carts with all kinds of secret servicemen <laughs> in them. And and doctors and, and anyone that, you know, is supposed to be taking care of the President. And, and quite... You know, it was quite an honor for me, you know, just to play with him, you know. And and, uh, and I can remember this particular occasion we were playing. We got to the second or third hole, I forget which, and there was a foursome in front of us. And <coughs> and uh, B.B. said, see if we can play through this foursome. So the guys that were playing there, he says, you can't play through unless you ha uh, we can have our picture taken with the president. And <laughs> sure enough, he, he did. He, he did. We got around to the seventh hall, and there was four guys playing there, and B.B. said, see if we can get through them, eh? Because the president has an appointment. So I went up to him, and I said, hey, you guys, uh, the president's in a hurry. Do you think that, uh, do you think that we could uh, <laughs> play through? Play through? Yes. And uh, he said, hey, what do you mean play through? We got, we're in a hurry, too. We're trying to get done also. Well, I thought you'd be nice, you know, to let the president go through, and he's got to—he'll be on his way. He says, "Ace, you know one thing." He says, "I bet he didn't even pay green fees to play here." <laughs> of course, you didn't know anything about that. I didn't know anything about it, no. but uh, even today, you don't know anything. I about still that. don't know anything. About it. <laughs> but I went back to it, you know, and uh, I, BB said, "Well, what did they say?" I said, "Well." They said they were busy, and they, they wanted to get home in a hurry to their family. And, well, what else did they say? Well, if you must know, baby, they said that you guys didn't even pay green fees. And Mr. Nixon says, you know, they're right. <laughs> but anyway, oh, that's, oh. that was uh, the occasion of uh, Some Mr. Good Nixon. Memory. Good <laughs> yeah. memories back then. Yeah. Of course, just for the audience, the Key Biscayne Hotel was known as the Southern White House for a long time when Richard Nixon was president. Yeah. Uh, they did hold a number of meetings there, and of course all the Secret Service people and many of the uh, oh, yeah, dignitaries they... from Washington were there. But of course the most impressive thing was Bay Lane over the other side of town, uh, where they used all of the houses on Bay Lane, particularly those that were up against the water, uh, as residences for various staff members from the White House. I think Richard Nixon was either over there in one of those houses. Yeah. Bay Lane was closed <coughs> off with barriers and police cars and people that were armed to prevent anybody from coming in that was unauthorized. Uh, so Bay Lane was a, pretty much of a government. You all know, of course, that the heliport that they used is still there today. It's down the end of, I think it's West Matheson, uh, that 
is down there, and uh, we've heard a little talk about that recently, but it's still there for those that want to swing that way and look behind those big steel doors. Well, there was well, still another thing about that area. They had continuous Coast Guard circled all around that in the bay, continuously. Wow. They had a, uh, it was a, similar to a real speedboat, you know. For anyone crossing over that, that area that they had uh, mm -hmm. marked out, and the Coast Guard would chase you back. So you couldn't bring your boat in to any of that uh, land along the, that area. Well, maybe one or two more memories here, Ace. Um, I understand that back in that, those days, it was difficult getting on and off this island. Well, Now, what was the problem? Why couldn't we just drive over to <laughs> Miami and back? Well, you know, they had a drawbridge there. A know? drawbridge. <laughs> yeah. And that drawbridge, you know, I think there's a rule that that the boatman has the right away, doesn't he, when he's sailing? Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Every canoe they have to lift the drawbridge. <laughs> well, they would open that drawbridge, say on a Sunday afternoon when it was just packed with people going both ways, and the traffic would back up all the way to the state park. And I remember that people would uh, would come into the restaurant that I was running at the time in their bathing suits and everything, seeing if they could be served. And there I am standing in a tuxedo, you know. So, I you remember know, when I first came to the Key, I, I made it a practice never to leave on a Saturday afternoon or evening yeah. or a Sunday afternoon or evening. Yeah. It seemed as if Crandon Park had one million people. It must have been a popular beach, was it? Oh, it was. It, and it was a beautiful beach. And it was a beautiful beach, and you didn't have to pay to, to use it. You know, now you have to I understand to you even had a little train that ran oh, all around. Oh, and a wonderful zoo. quiet garden And park. a very, very wonderful yeah. zoo. And the zoo. And, and the zoo was terrific. You mean animal zoo? <coughs> animal zoo, yeah. Oh. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They, they did have a... I remember they got all of us lifeguards one time searching for a huge python that had gotten loose. And a what? A python snake. Yeah. It, and they finally found it. But the guys... Oh, my. It was really funny. To did see we have rattlesnakes on this key? Oh, we did we here? ever? Yes, we did. You know, I can remember driving over a rattlesnake, you know, coming in at night on a, on a dark road, and they'd be crossing. And you could drive over that thing two or three times before you'd, you'd, you'd finally get it... Uh, Stop. We'd stop and back up and go back over <laughs> until, uh, until but it, it would get right across the road still, even though you hit it two or three times. There was a guy that used to take care of the state park. His name was Tony. He dressed as a policeman. Oh, he wasn't a policeman. But he came into Vernon's drugstore, the little Vernon's drugstore, one morning. He had a, a rattlesnake draped over uh, the hood of this car. I mean, it must have been that round. How round is that? It was dead, you know. It looks like, like about a, five it inches. It's a good size diameter. Uh, grapefruit or something like that, yeah. Oh my gosh. But Tony, he was quite a character also. We don't have these anymore, do we? They Well, you know, on on the, when they started to develop the first apartment building, which was the island house, that was adjacent to the, the Key Colony golf course. And I can remember when they started to clear that land with bulldozers, I was standing on the uh, on the uh, Boundary line, the out of bounds line on the ninth hole, and I was ready to hit a shot, and I could hear that rattle behind me, you know, and you could really hear it. I mean, I almost said, and anyway, they had all kinds of snakes showed up when they started uh, bulldozing that land. Well, but now I don't think there are are any, you know, uh, anymore. Uh, at least I haven't heard of any. This has really been a, a great afternoon for me. Um, hearing all of these great things. We came all the way down Crandon on one side with yeah. the shopping center and that great steakhouse over here and the golf course over here and the whole, the, the yeah. white, Southern White House and, and Nixon and his golf course. Um, maybe we, we've done enough for the moment. Uh -huh. uh, why don't you just finish with, with one thing? Uh, you came here, why? Why here rather than over in Miami or something like well, that? Well, as I said, I became acquainted with Key Biscayne through my work at the beach as that, the when beach. I was going to the University of Miami. Yeah. And, and you liked the idea oh, of Oh, yeah, and I had, I had so many friends uh, that their parents lived here and while they were going to the University of Miami, you know, and that's how I got acquainted with All right. With what everyone. do you think the best thing is? From that time. For me? Yes. In the old days, what would you picture the nicest or the, the best greatest thing? The best thing that happened to me on this island was yes. 
I found my wife. All right. Now, what is the second best? <laughs> <laughs> and she's the greatest. Now, tell me yeah. the second best thing. Well, you know, it was such a great place to live because you knew everybody, regardless of what their position in life was. They all seemed to be at a level, you know, so that you could talk to anybody, you know, and, and everybody seemed to enjoy it. Okay. Now, what is the on, best thing today? The best thing today, you know, I don't know. I'm still living here, and I still uh, like Kibis Kane. It's not the same, though. But it's not the same, no. It, it, it isn't the same, and I can remember, you know, Kibis Kane has uh, uh, a Latin, you know, population now, but I remember when all of those guys came, I was running the golf course, and they were some of the greatest people I can remember. In 1959 and 1960, I got acquainted with all of them when they moved here, and they were, but even a bunch of those guys have left, you know. And I think the primary thing is they, they had those little old Mackle houses, you know, and they sold them and made, uh, made a good uh, profit on them. Mm -hmm. But uh, Key Biscayne is, is, is developing uh, uh, a situation here that I don't particularly like. The buildings are too big for me, and the homes are too big for me. And, uh, and uh, I'm very content right where I am, and I don't have that much to worry about. Well, Ace, it was wonderful talking to you. Yeah. I hope most of the residents here on the Key that have an opportunity now and forever into the future um, to hear your story and, and what it looked like back in the 50s, uh, I hope they've enjoyed this as much as I have. Uh, I want to thank you for coming. This is Ace Newman. Noonan. Noonan, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I'm Dr. Bob Maggs. Uh, we're both Key Biscayne residents, of course. Absolutely. We've been, both been here for a number of years. But Ace, thank you very much for being with us. Thanks On behalf of the History Society, thank you very much for listening.